Hello, how are you doing today? Hope you are fine wherever you are and you are ready to learn something about change management simulation. This is a simulation provided under Harvard Business Publishing Education and specifically this change management simulation is about power and influence. Usually uh, change uh, in an organization is a factor or is an event that is controlled by two uh, key factors that is power and influence. Therefore, whenever um, a leader or the person in charge of change is able to strike a balance between power and influence, change is likely to be successful and result with the intended purpose. So um, in this case, uh, we need first to understand the scenario at hand for us to clearly understand how we are going to carry on this change process. As you can see, uh, for us, we have been given a role of a CEO and um, CEO is a custodian of change and is the one who is likely or is the one who needs to drive a company to a particular change process that is needed. Okay, let's read the scenario for us to understand what is at stake at this point and what needs to be changed. Okay, you are the CEO and founder of Spectrum Sunglass Company. While you generally feel good about the state of the business, you are beginning to, to think about your legacy. You are reading more and more professional articles, emphasizing the importance of sustainable development for business and linking the theme of sustainability and innovation, such as why sustainability is now the key driver of innovation. You are frustrated that you don't have any new sunglass products to offer to the vocal customer who increasingly express concerns about Spectrum's environmental impact. Not only does sustainable development make sense for you personally, from both morally and economical standpoint, you also see this as an opportunity to differentiate Spectrum's product and company from your competitors, which focus primarily on price and design. You have a potential new product design that has received positive focus group feedback, as well as some exciting branding deals with Hollywood celebrities in the world. Even still, you are preoccupied with sustainability. At Spectrum Annual Executive Strategy Retreat, you decided to ask for special and planned session to discuss the conversation you recently had with the Vice President at Spectrum Sunglasses Company, largest retail customer, Big Mart, which comprises 30% of Spectrum Annual Revenue. The VP explained he was now in charge of national sunglasses procurement for Big Mart and they had recently made a policy to promote all product which bear a green stamp manufacturing certification for environmental friendliness. He added that notably Big Mart's market research revealed that even its most price sensitive customer was starting to prefer green product with their price range. The VP explained that uh, Big Mart was now considering recommending that all of its supplier to go through the green stamp certification process. So um, this is uh, the scenario we have at the hand because now we can see the largest uh, customer for this company sunglasses has already started and has even started the process of creating policy to make sure that they focus on only acquiring those products that has, have, been, have been proven to offer a green product, those that are environmental friendly. Therefore, losing 30% of your sales by just ignoring what that uh, customer wants is quite a big challenge and can really tank uh, the revenue that the company has been receiving. Therefore, this is something that uh, is very important of, and something of urgent that this company needs to address. And uh, let's just uh, go down and see what are the key uh, members of this organization are saying. You can see uh, Paul Dyers, uh, CFO, that is Chief uh, Financial Officer, saying what exactly are big match terms. Um, and then uh, you as a CEO, you are reply, replying and saying they want us to reduce petrochemical raw material such as polycarbonate plastics in the manufacturing process from 90% to 50% within two years. The VP, not so subtly, threatened that if we don't respond with Within three months with detailed implementation plan, then Big Mart will consider cancelling all our contract with them and shift to competitor who will. While this is unexpected, this could be an opportunity to develop a unique product line for a mass market base. And I think we are up to the challenge. 
then uh, let's see what uh, VP Harris is saying, VP uh, of sales and marketing. A sustainability feature will help distinguish us in long term, and this market may, and this marketing angle may open up new customer markets, such as exporting to more environmentally conscious countries in Europe. And then Paul Diaz say, is saying that uh, we can't afford to start a sustainability project just because we might demand it. Green material substitute for petroleum are probably expensive. We are highly leveraged as it is. So a drop in profitability might put our ability to meet our debt covenant at risk. So now uh, these are there's a concern here because now uh, the chief financial officer is really concerned about um, this change that's, that is being proposed, especially on their ability to meet their debt obligation. And therefore, that is a legitimate, legitimate concern that uh, needs to be addressed too because um, change sometimes is quite expensive and um, it can actually cost the company in a different ways. And then we have um, Aisha Farouk, VP of Operation, saying uh, we just spent 12 months undergoing a growing Six Sigma quality certification process. A plant manager will absolutely refuse another major, major change in material inputs. Again, there's a legitimate, legitimate concern here from a VP of Operation because they are saying that in, in just in the previous 12 months, they have, all, they have been through a Six Sigma quality certification process and the introduction of another change might be very uh, expensive and very uh, difficult for the plant managers because now they are just adjusting to their Six Sigma quality certification process and it's not even fully implemented or even fully uh, proven that it's going to work. And again, they are required to change uh, from what they have been used to doing to maybe going green and then let's go to the next person uh, we have a uh, Luis Osh uh, benefit administrator spectrum is still recovering and has only recently begun rehiring, rehiring her workers isn't a dramatic shift in focus to sustainability premature again and the company is not that sound uh, we can see that um, maybe previously it had uh, fired some workers and now uh, maybe it has just uh, rebounded and start making money and that's the reason why maybe they are rehiring again therefore there's still some other problem that need to be addressed and then we have uh, uh, Mari Gopina the VP of human resource but we need to give this serious thought there are a lot of at stake at ignoring this why don't you head across functional task force to come up with a compromise solutions. Okay, uh, VP Human Resource actually, it's, uh, she's taking this um, with a positive uh, note. Um, she has noted that um, uh, without, uh, uh, without considering this, actually there might be some challenges in future. Therefore, it is something that um, they need actually to go deep and try to delve to understand. Uh, what a solution will be best for this company. And then uh, let's just go down a little bit. And then we have here, you, are, you agree suggesting the following plan for the team, team's work. The four additional members come from marketing, R&D, finance and production. They devolved at least 75% of the attempt to develop a proposal for Big Mart that is acceptable to all four departments. You will devote 50% uh, of your time to the task force while juggling your responsibility as a CEO. The task force will present Spectrum Senior Management Team with a financial acceptable plan to use petrochemical alternative within three months. Therefore, some of, uh, there's a plan and um, this plan already is something that we can say it's not solely there completely, but um, it's something that um, they can really start working with and um, uh, with their proper and uh, with the team behind uh, this uh, key uh, strategy that is being proposed. Actually, a change can be feasible within three months or within two years that has been set for them to implement. And then let's see the management team concur with your task force proposal as the retreat end and everyone head to dinner. You start uh, pondering the numerous issues and obstacles to overcome in developing an acceptable plan for Big Mart within three months. 
your central challenge is to convince your team that is dramatic change in the organization strategy and product is necessary and environmental sustainable is critical to the company future. No small task in relatively short period of time. However, when Big Matt tells Spectrum to jump, the usual response is to ask how high. Fortunately, you also have the formal authority and widespread respect throughout the organization to tackle this challenge in a meaningful way. So um, having understa understood the scenario, uh, now let's go to analyze and see how organization is, is set up as at now to able to adopt to this change. Uh, we can see uh, we have these graphs like the, the first graph here is um, about awareness. This um, shows like uh, the percentage of the workers in the organization that are aware about uh, these changes. And then after awareness, we have interest. How many are developing interest toward this change? And then find at the third stage, we have a trial. How many are willing to enter trial stage and try to implement this change? And final, final uh, step is adoption. This uh, actually come last because um, this is a process and uh, before people accept that this is something that need to be implemented to the organization and it's something beneficial to this organization and overall uh, future sustainability of this organization, then they can adopt uh, these changes. And we can see uh, uh, now we are at uh, week, uh, let's see, we are at week 23 out of 96 and we can see already there's some um, uh, some who are willing or to try this change, but uh, we only have one person who actually has uh, ready to adopt this change, and that is the CEO. That is you. And then we can see uh, nearly uh, all at this at the organization are aware of these changes, and we can also see that uh, uh, we have already entered a movement phase. So now we are at a movement phase at week 23. And uh, we can see also the interest is there. Already interest has been established to adopt to this change. Therefore, the progress is not bad. It's, it's OK for now because uh, at least um, the employee, they are already developing the interest. And some are even entering the trial stage. Therefore, let's see how long it's going to take for us to actually move most of them to adoption phase. OK, let's proceed to. Lever impact. And so in this case, lever impact uh, simply talks about uh, those uh, decisions that you are going to take uh, to help your company or your employee uh, move from one stage of change to the next one. As you can see here, uh, all lever that has already been entered um, or uh, all decisions that have already been selected have really only have a, a very low direct impact to each uh, employee. As you can see here, there's no employee who has, has been affected on medium level or high level. Most of them are uh, on low level impact. But uh, don't worry because uh, these things take some time and after uh, we have gone uh, through different decision making process that actually we can say is balanced between power and influence. Uh, you can see uh, employee will start moving from uh, low impact to medium impact and finally to high impact and that will really help us to uh, make most of for employee to adopt th to these changes and then um, now let's go to relationship network relationship network is very important because if you can see um, those people who have a close relation especially work directly and uh, is with friend with um, if we can uh, make like uh, most people be friends and also work with uh, or even work directly but most like most important thing uh, is uh, informal uh, friendship that will really help us to implement these changes and also to spread uh, the news about uh, these changes that will really help us to improve the way we are moving from one change process to the next one And also here is some hint, they say roll over the people to see their network highlighted. You'll only see a person in formal network after they have been interviewed. Therefore, it's important for you to consider uh, lever that uh, include uh, interview in the decision. 
because this will really help you to understand like uh, the key uh, relationships. Those are the informal relationships between uh, different employees because this informal relationship are very crucial in driving change in uh, the organization. So usually uh, while making this decision, the most important thing for you to consider is the credibility score. Uh, currently, we have cred credibility score of uh, 9 out of 10. Therefore, make sure you maintain uh, the, the highest uh, credibility score. Finally, we we'll really love to attain credibility score of uh, 10 out of 10 because that uh, really help you to uh, max up your change process and actually move most people quite faster to adoption stage. And then um, critical mass. Critical mass, this um, shows uh, the number of people that you need to move to adoption stage for you actually to be considered successful uh, in, implementing, in implementing this change process. And then uh, uh, we also have weak use. The faster you can move uh, employee to the adoption stage, uh, the better because now you remember you have been given uh, three months for you to write a considerable report saying that um, you are going to implement this change and send it to your uh, customer who that is the customer that actually contribute to about 30 uh, percent of your sales therefore it's very cr critical for you to try as much as possible to move uh, uh, most of your employee uh, to the adoption stage so that it will be easier for you to implement these changes now uh, let's go to the de decision phase and try to make our first decision and see what we'll get out of it as you can see here there are so several levers uh, or areas that uh, you need to select as your decision uh, the first one we have uh, walk the talk we have get a uh, consultant uh, support the second one and then uh, contact uh, interview issue email hold town hall meetings provide internal skill building provide ex external skill building, conduct pilot project, post progress report, tell a story. Okay, let's see, we have attempts, we have a lever, we have a scope of uh, impact, we have weeks to implement, and then week before reuse. For example, the first one, work, uh, the talk, uh, we, um, it has been tried once, and um, uh, this affects the entire organization. Uh, week to implement, it takes two weeks, and you can only reuse after eight weeks. Uh, we have uh, the second one get consultant support this affect uh, we have we, it has been attempted twice and this affect the entire organization a uh, week to implement three weeks and then weeks until you reuse is one uh, we have a uh, contact private interview uh, it has been attempted twice uh, six scope of impact actually four weeks to implement one week before you reuse also one and then we have a uh, issue email notice this affect entire uh, week to implement one and then weeks before we use four. Therefore, uh, those that uh, you see have a uh, uh, gray background, uh, those are uh, are being have already been reused uh, used recently and cannot be reused at the current uh, phase. Maybe uh, we can see, for example, get consultant support weeks until reuse, remaining one week, so it can be reused after one week. And then uh, we have uh, conduct private interviews. Uh, this scope of impact actually can be implemented only on four employees. It's already being uh, used or at, uh, it has already been used. Therefore, it cannot be used now, maybe until uh, in the next phase. Therefore, uh, when you understand the scope of uh, impact and also week to implement and week before use, this is very important because um, it can help you to plan when to use these uh, levers. For example, uh, first thing you need to understand now we are at uh, movement phase. And um, what you need in the movement phase, you don't need to move employees to adoption phase. What uh, happened in the movement phase, uh, when you have so many people in movement phase, what you are trying to do, maybe move most of them to trial phase. Therefore, the levers that you select now should do exactly that, move employee from movement to trial. And um, as you can see, let's see, let's find one that we'll use. So uh, let's see this one. Privately confront uh, resistors. Uh, resistors to changes to be expected in all change initiative. 
but sometimes the resistance is irrational and politically corrosive. If properly executed within an, act, an actual resistor, pulling this lever can positively influence adoption of the initiative by the resistor and his or her friends. Okay, let's select this one and then let's select a resistor. Uh, the resistor chain in this uh, case you can see is on the interest phase. Uh, we also see we can only confront uh, one resistor at a time. That's the reason why we have only selected uh, one person. And let's see the impact. Now we have uh, news for week 24. And uh, the most striking part is uh, here. You can see they are saying uh, you have sufficient credibility and have properly timed this lever pool. You can see our credibility score is now 9. It has not changed from previous week. And that is a good one because the maximum is 10. And then uh, we can see we have an effect on the targets. One target was directly impacted. Six targets were indirectly impacted. We also have following people enter the trial stage. We have uh, Michael Bath, Paul Dyers, and Aisha Farouk. Effect on the organization, you can see uh, for further detail, go to the organization readiness page. And then your company continue to be in movement phase. Um, I just want to talk about uh, timing the lever pool. Uh, you can see like um, usually in any organization there is resistance to change and it's okay because sometimes this resistance are, um, actually have some reason. For example, in this case, uh, people uh, employee they are saying that um, they, have, they have been through another change in the past 12 months and it's not even uh, completely implement, implemented and even the result of this change is not yet achieved. Again, there's another issue about uh, debt repayment, and it's another major concern uh, that uh, employee of this organization have. Therefore, the resistance to change is okay, and it should be there. Um, usually, uh, those people that are resisting change, uh, you cannot confront them at the beginning of change process. First of all, you need to create uh, influence. Therefore, uh, the most important thing for you to do is to find uh, those lever or those decisions that help you to create influence on others, especially those who are readily and willing to make uh, these changes in the organization. And we have them behind you. Uh, you can then confront the resistant. Uh, because uh, uh, when you confront the resistant, when uh, every or many people in the organization are already interested and are already part of the movement, uh, it will be easier for you to convince those who are resisting to also join the board. However, if you confront them first when you are just starting the change process, uh, you can even make uh, the resistance more pronounced because they can start influencing others uh, to do or to go against those changes. And the fact that uh, there's a uh, um, there's a significant reason why they should resist this change. It's going to be easier for those who resist the change to have a following. Therefore, first of all, you need to start by creating an influence before uh, you confront those who are resisting the change. So we'll have a video on week 25 and also remaining weeks. Therefore, kindly subscribe to our channel uh, so that when you have this video, YouTube is going to let you know. Uh, that's all for today. Hope it has been it has been educative enough and you have gotten something from this video. Again, thank you for taking your time to watch our video. Have a nice time.